welcome back to A World Without with me, Chris. And me, Jack. This is the podcast where we get into the hypothetical and discuss what we think would happen if something from our everyday lives suddenly stopped existing tomorrow. That's right. We're back. Jack has returned from his travels because the world is in chaos. Yes, but of course we're doing this remotely from our own homes because we don't want to be sharing our filthy little germs around, but we thought we'd give this a try, see if it works. Yeah. So today we're talking about what life might be like in a world without the moon. Ooh. Oh, not the old moon. I liked it. It's gone. What, what did it ever do to us? Um, uh, turn nothing. Uh, right, sorry, okay. That's the yeah. answer I was looking uh, for, yeah. nothing. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing. Oh, sorry, I thought it was natural. Quiz. The moon does loads for us. I mean, it, it comes out twice every day. What? Sun only comes out once. Twice? Am I being stupid? Think about it. Beginning of the day, where's the moon? It's up there. Yeah. It goes. Day goes by. Later that evening, it comes back out again. Well, I feel like it's still once. It's, it's still continuous in the previous night. It's not like it once goes... Once per day. Per right, day. Per... Okay. Okay. <laughs> On a technicality, I'll give you that one. I guess out of all the points we've talked about before, there's actually a fair bit written about a world without the moon. People have seemed to have... Th- well, I get, not like, you know books and stuff but like articles on the internet people have so, thought about it a bit so I what, think. what you're saying is you, you've copied a load of people's yes points. yeah yeah <laughs> I, I basically didn't have to really research this one i just just copied from an article online basically so if, if you just want a quicker version of this podcast i could just put a link in the description i guess it'd probably be <laughs> a bit easier great i wish they would have told me sooner i've spent hours on these so firstly of course there would be no moon in the sky. That's quite an obvious one. Which would apparently actually make the night a lot darker because the moon makes it a lot brighter than you would suspect. Now, none of these sources I've verified in uh, validity. Of course, typical a world without fashion here is to not check anything. Oh, exactly. Just read someone and presumed that must be true. Uh, <laughs> didn't check who said it or how they came up <laughs> to that conclusion. But anyway, apparently, without the moon we wouldn't even be able to see our hand in front of our face. Now, I what? disagree with that because there are days where there is no moon. You know, the like new moon. Where we clouds don't... and stuff as well. Yeah. Well, clouds is a bit different because, like, you know, clouds just obscure some of the light. They don't get rid of all of the light. They're not, like, opaque. They're translucent. Is that what the right words? Aeroplanes. What about them? They're tr- opaque. What, you think an aeroplane's big enough to cover the entire moon? I don't know, if you got it wrong at the wrong time. How big do you think aeroplanes are, Chris? I don't. I've, I mean, they're kind of big. <laughs> but when they're really high in the sky, they don't take up the size of a moon. Can you it imagine how if... low they're flying, all right? Oh, okay, okay, you're at an airport. <laughs> you're, you're standing under a plane on a runway. It might cover it then. <laughs> but... I often lay under planes, all right? That, this is the thing. This is a niche problem to be running into, Chris. Um, but no, apparently it would be incredibly dark, basically. Right. But upside, the stars would be all like amazingly like vivid and beautiful and really really bright because obviously the comparative light pollution from the moon wouldn't be dimming them you know how like <laughs> when we have a new moon the stars are much more prominent than when we have a full moon because the full moon's super bright and you can't see all the stars so astrologers yeah they have a great it. time they, they have the, be- the best time in the world yeah so good for them good I for guess? them but bad for people that want to look at their hand in front of their face yes i think that's probably <laughs> a higher percentage of people maybe well, some ast- astronomers might even want to look at their hands in front of their face as oh, well. Oh, that'd be real torn, wouldn't they? They'd be like, oh, be like, oh stars oh. do look good, but I do miss my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so we are, of course, also talking about the moon, not just moons right. generally, right? Because I, I, I wasn't sure, actually. Yeah, well, you weren't sure. Well, I'm telling you right now, probably a bit late. Yeah, we're, we're talking about just the moon, not other moons. There's plenty of other moons going on. In the world. Well, not in the world, obviously. <laughs> Out of the world. Very much not in the world. For instance, like Jupiter has 79 moons. Right. That's a lot of moons. We've got one moon. Apparently, though, Saturn ha- now has more. Well, it's g- gaining new ones. Well, yeah. So there's 29 moons awaiting confirmation on Saturn. Right. Cur- They're in a currently queue. has 53 confirmed moons. Uh, potentially would have... 82 if these others are confirmed which would mean then it would overtake jupiter with the most amount of moons wow so they're in a bit of a battle with each other 
So it's all about paperwork, then? Yeah. He's holding the whole thing up. I mean, I don't really even know what the classification for a moon is. When does a rock become a moon? This is true. This is true. What happens if you cut a moon in half? Do you now get two moons? Oh, or... that's like the old sandwich debate, but for astrologers. It is. It is. <laughs> Hold on. I said astrologers. Is that wrong? Do I mean astronomers? I'm not the right person to be Astrology is like whether you're a Gemini or Sagittarius, isn't it? The, that made up stuff. Whereas astronomy is like the science one. Do you, do you think there's anybody that's both? They're an astrologer and an astronomer. Oh, I mean, almost certainly. There must be some astronomers out there who believe in being like a Gemini or whatever. If so, let us know. Yeah. Or did they hate each other? Are they at a constant war? Is there like an underground war between the astronomers and astrologers? astrologers, oh, this, astrologers, astrologers that the we other one. This, this sounds like a like a plot for a Hollywood movie or something. Yeah, maybe. It sounds rubbish, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't they all sometimes? Mm. I did check um, all the hundreds and hundreds of moons out there. I, they've all got like different names and stuff, right? Some of them are just called like... TB sixteen seventy two four. Right. I mean, it would be confusing if they're all just called the moon. So yeah, it's <laughs> good they have different names, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. But I thought, you know, see what some of their names were. See if it, maybe any moons have been named after us, right? So there is a moon out there called Cressida, which Ooh. you know, kind of like Chris, is a we, little bit. What's it a moon of? It's an inner satellite of Uranus. Uh, <laughs> uh, that shouldn't which, be funny. Fair enough. You know, I. <laughs> I think I can't aptly argue. named after you there, <laughs> I'd say. That's yeah, it was identified the 9th of January 1986, which makes it the same age exactly as Kate Middleton. Okay. Wouldn't it be spooky if it had your birthday? I know. I would have been freaked out. You should have just pretended it did. Honestly, who's listening to this podcast and then doing the fact check? No, exactly. We don't even do the fact checking. We're doing the podcast. So, I mean, it'd be really weird if someone was fact checking our lack of fact checking. Did also try and look up your name as well. A little bit harder to find. Okay. Though I did, I did find a moon called Janus, which, you know, sometimes you're a bit of a Janus, so... Mm. Is that also a Uranus? The Janus of Uranus? Weirdly, it's not. It's a uh, moon of Jupiter. Uh, um, okay. It's extensively cratered, very icy and porous. That's, that sounds about right for me. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess one downside of me not actually um, researching the information I stole is that I don't know if any of this is correct because I've got two conflicting pieces of information here. Good, uh, good, you can good. decide which you think is more likely. Apparently, either our days would only now last six to 12 hours and therefore there'd be over a thousand days in the year or our days would forever be the same length because I didn't even know that apparently our days have been getting slower throughout history back in the dinosaur age uh, an earth day was only like <laughs> technical s- term to 16 16 hours or something like that and then it's slowly getting slower because effectively the moon acts as like friction on the earth and it's slowly slowing its rotation down it's like come God, let's stop stop it it's trying to slow us down because it's got its huh. own gravitational pull or some science behind it but if our moon was then gone, some people then say that obviously without that gravitational thing, our Earth would speed up and start spinning super fast and therefore make days only like six to 12 hours long. But other people said, no, it wouldn't affect it. It would just stay the same speed. So basically, nobody knows. But it, w- it would do something to do with our days. <laughs> something would happen. Everyone's agreed that it won't stay the same. Yes. It, something right. would happen. Is, <laughs> Good. Is Thanks, my research. scientists. <laughs> yep. <laughs> But that would be weird, wouldn't it? We'd have to change all of our months and all of our, like, you know, would we have to have longer weeks? Because there's now a thousand, over a thousand days in a year. Yeah, like, time is very dependent on things happening around us, right? Like, everything, even even down to the clocks, the day cycles, the weeks, the months, the years. Is this why we have leap years, then, to counteract the... The oh, moon's I, I friction. I think it's just that actually we count it slightly wrong with actually how it does spin and then we have to make oh. up for our bad calculations or something. We're not even counting it right anyway. So maybe doing the leap year thing is wrong because the moon's already trying to sort us back out anyway. Maybe. I don't really know. Apparently it would affect our seasons though as well. Well, like salt and pepper and stuff. No, obviously not, Chris. Uh, no. Uh, and again, they don't know which way to go because it would depend how it affects our axis because the moon affects the, the tilt of our Earth in some kind of way and the tilt of our Earth is what causes our seasons. So if the tilt became less extreme, we'd go to basically having no seasons at all. Like it'd always basically be the same 
season, whatever. But not for, but not for everybody, right? There'd be four seasons no, yeah. equally around the world. Uh, no, because if there was no more tilt, it would be equal everywhere. We'd sort of be a middle ground of all of them. We'd all be in spring, I guess. Oh, it's quite nice. Or if the rotation made it more extreme, we'd have like nut season. So it'd go from being like crazy winter to super summer. Which would be super summer sounds fun. Super summer honestly. does sound fun, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm into super summer, to be fair. Although, probably just set on fire. But um, Well, uh, yeah, I mean, d- it depends on your definition of super, but yeah. mine usually is Good market name, me. though, isn't it? Good poster, <laughs> it is, I see it is. that. Yeah. You, you sold it to me. You yeah. know? <laughs> Put the whole setting on fire bit in small print, and, you yeah. know, I'm a sucker for that. Also, faster wins. Didn't say why. But apparently, we would now have faster wins. I think they're just, just they were free balling at that point. Mm. They just started chucking extra stuff in there as well. Yeah. Oh, also, everybody named Frank might fall over or something. They, see, it's easy. No way to I'm prove it, is there? Too. No way to prove it. So, what you can do, destroy the moon, find out. <laughs> Come on, idiot. Obviously, tides as well. We all know that moons somehow work with tides. We all know that. So, apparently, we just have really, really small tides. Just wouldn't do much. They'd just be like, nope. Small, low tide, high tide, in a, in a tiny change. Yeah, because apparently the the sun's pull on the world, because it's not what tides are, right? Is the gravity of the moon mm-hmm. pulling the water towards it a little bit, and then obviously letting that go and splashing it back down again when it when it disappears. Um, the sun pulls less than half as strongly as the moon, so we would still have some tides, but they'd just be a bit naff. Yeah. You know, Do you think that affects rubbish. like overall like waves? I don't really know how waves work, but like would surfing not be able to exist anymore because there's no more waves? I think tides are definitely linked with waves, but I think waves are more like the wind and oh, so maybe we'd have more waves because the wind's now higher apparently for whatever reason. That's true. Hey, the super summer is really shaping up to be an yeah. awesome time. Get Just your crazy surfboard. surfing, you know, <laughs> massive waves. It'd be fun. <laughs> Don't need a barbecue because things are just setting just on fire. It on the ground. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm loving super summer. Plenty of people out there have bought some property on the moon, so they're going to be kicking themselves now. Can you do that? Apparently so. Um, in 1967, the United Nations Outer Space Treaty said nobody can own the moon. They were just like, no, nobody's allowed it, right? It's not anybody's. And loads of, loads of countries signed it and everything. But then one guy, Dennis Hope, was basically like, I'm not a country, I'm an individual. So, ha, I own the moon now, and I'm going to sell it off for a tasty, tasty profit. But he doesn't own it, though, does he? Well, he filed something to the relevant government, being like, I own but the moon, what by government? the way. Because who owns it already? Who do you buy it off if no one well, owns who, it? Whoever knows about this treaty, I guess, I think he was American, I don't know. He was, he was basically he like, was by the way, America... American. I <laughs> <laughs> think they own everything, don't they? <laughs> he was like, I own the moon. And the government apparently never really responded because I think they were kind of like... That doesn't mean oh, yes. Right. If someone goes, I own this, by the way, and they just ignore you, it doesn't mean you get to keep it. <laughs> well, but I think it literally they didn't respond because they were kind of a bit gutted that they were like, like oh, no, we, di- we didn't put that in the, in the fine print there. Oh, he's got a point. He's got a point. Uh, if we just don't talk to him, maybe he'll think it's fine or something okay so so then what and, it, and then he sells it to people he sells it to people yeah you can go online you can buy um one acre of moon for twenty dollars right but if if you if i was to then go there and be like nope this is my acre who who's there to arrest me this is a good point i mean i just feel astronauts? like we're just uh, yeah, all, the patrolling astronauts on the moon. I forgot about them. The guys are just like wandering <laughs> yeah. around the moon, making sure There's no always... one's set up a house on the moon. There's always some up there, but but that's quite a reasonable price, you know. Twenty dollars for one acre. I didn't know what an acre was, but it's just a bit smaller than a football pitch. That's well cheap, isn't that good? I mean, you know, transport costs getting to and from work are pretty high. So well... yeah, yeah, the real estate's cheap, but all oh, the commuter costs. Oof. <laughs> This is true. This is true, but still, you know, initial initial profit, pretty good. I mean, you could buy a bunch of the moon and then wait for the prices to go up and then sell it. Great. Be great. Think of all the football games you could have on there. Oh, it'd be, be horrible, though. You'd lose your ball all the time. It'd just fly up into the sky. <laughs> That's oh, true. The ball's gone again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gone over the next door's fence again. Wait and, another oh. 10 years, it might come down. <laughs> I actually technically own some of the moon. Oh, you fell into Dennis's scheme, didn't you? He's like, <laughs> do, you want, do you want some moon, mate? You're like, yes, please. 
<laughs> I didn't I didn't buy it from Dennis. I technically got given it for free as part of a magazine. I got a little bit of space dust in in a box. Whether it truly was space dust, I don't actually know. Yeah, it's not, mate. They're not giving that mate. away for free. How expensive uh, do you reckon it is to get some space dust from the moon? Well, think how much there is in one acre for twenty dollars. They were probably getting the bucket by the bucket load. You still have to get there, Chris. Not many people have gotten there. I don't think they were just gathering bits of space dust to give out for people for free in a magazine. <laughs> You've just been given some normal dust. Hey, this this was a legitimate science magazine. I don't think they'd lie to me. Mm, all right. Okay. All right. And it was encased, and it, it had a little like certificate thing with it, and it said "Bit of the Moon" on it. I can't really remember what it said on the. Certificate. Where is it now? Well, you never showed thing, me right? this bit of the moon. It, it's up in my loft. And I went up there once and found the box, and it had been broken and cracked. So currently, I have moon all over my loft, spread everywhere. Well, that's no good. How will you know what's space dust and what's normal dust? <laughs> this is true. This is true. I don't know. I'm, I'm very ashamed of my myself. I guess I probably shouldn't be saying this publicly either, just in case I ever want to apply for a job at NASA. They'll mm. just be like, no. You can't we, be trusted. We gave you a bit of moon and you lost it. So <laughs> we don't want you going up there and losing the whole thing. <laughs> so really you don't own a bit of the moon is what you're saying. Well, I do. It's still up in the loft. I just don't know where it is. I lost a bit of the moon. That's irresponsible. Yeah. Speaking of going to the moon, uh, I guess we'll never now be able to prove if the moon landing was faked or not. True. If we can't get there, there's no evidence either confirming nor denying. So, do you think uh, that we faked it? Oh. No, obviously not, but it's, 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 it's a fun little idea, isn't it? It's a fun little idea, yeah. Apparently Kubrick filmed it, you know, it's funny, isn't it? Apparently so, yeah. I mean, the, you know, the directing choices he made were, were just, like, yeah. definitely, you, if you get Kubrick, you know you're going to get your money's worth. Yeah, because like, that's apparently he made 2001 in, like, preparation for making the moon landing and stuff. Like and that, that, was whole, his, that was, like, a planning phase. That whole film was, like, it was just, like, his previs for the moon. And then they were like, it's a bit experimental, mate. Do you want to make, <laughs> tone, tone it down a bit? And he's like, okay, I'll get rid of the monkeys and the big psychedelic ending and then maybe we'll and have the moon And all of landing. the editing and all <laughs> yeah. of the nice camera shots yeah. and Maybe we'll just make quality. it look a bit more real, I guess. Do, do you think it's faked? I think we went to the moon, yes. Yeah, yeah. I very much do, but... It's kind of a, a shame that we haven't been to the moon since 1972. I know. That was the last time we went. We should have made more of an effort to go while it was still there, you know? Yeah, we wasted our time. I guess it's like, well, we've already done that. Let's go to other planets. But the problem is a lot of future space travel actually involves us using the moon as like a base for us to be able to then go further out and stuff. So okay. if we don't have that, apparently that makes even further space travel more difficult because we don't have like the moon base as like a I don't know the technical side behind it. it there's, it's there's a it's basically like a pit stop, yes. right? It's a it's a pit stop or a service station or something yeah. like that on the motorway. If you've not got that, where are you going to go to have a wee? All these astronauts and fuel they up can't go and, to Mars without yeah. having a wee and getting more fuel and stuff. You grab yourself a um a, a Mars bar. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Plenty of other uh, space themed chocolate bars you could have Milky gone Way. There. Yeah. Milky Way. I wanted Starburst. there to be a moon one, but. There's a moon pie in America. I don't know what that is. Neither do I, but it's, it exists. <laughs> okay. Can't grab one of them either. There we go. And hey, listen, there isn't currently a petrol station on the moon. We could talk to Dennis Hope and sort of work something out here pretty cheap. For $20 or £20, I can't remember what you said. Either way, we could buy a plot to build a, a petrol station on there. Yeah, you can easily fill a petrol station on the size of a football pitch. You could have a bit of football going on on the side as well. Yeah. I mean, getting the resources up there would be ooh, tough. Just build it, difficult, build it out of rock, I guess. You know, the amount of uh, inventions we normally come up with on this podcast, and this is a very viable sounding business. Yeah. Oh, well, let's get in contact with Dennis and we'll see what we can do. Dennis, call us, mate. If you're listening to this, mate, we're interested. Many people say the moon was, because it's gone now, made of cheese. What's your thoughts on that? I didn't... I I, I had this written down as well. I was going to say we're going to have a shortage of cheese. But I know this from Wallace and Gromit, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yes, obviously. Did they make that myth up? No. Or did the myth exist before that? It The myth existed way before that. And apparently it was never even a myth. Everybody knew that it wasn't made of cheese. It 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 was just like a, a thing. It was more of a metaphor that the moon was made of cheese. It was... Well, there, I, I can't... I don't I, know why. I know... I don't think... Do you think... What? Oh, 
Wait a second. Roll, roll it back. You think people believed that the moon was made of cheese? Maybe back way, way back in time at some point when, you know, they thought like magic was existed and stuff, like when fire was a thing and stuff. Maybe they thought the moon was made of cheese. Oh. Rudimentary cheese, granted, but cheese nonetheless. Okay. How long has cheese been around? Side note. I don't know. I've not done a world without cheese yet. <laughs> How long <laughs> has cheese been around? I reckon quite a while. You know, I reckon it was one of the early forms. Oh, it is. It's been a while. No, <laughs> yeah. Is it? Let me guess. Let me guess. I'm going to say 3,000 years. Um, I've got to do maths. Yeah, about uh, about that. A bit longer. Rip. Uh, 1650 BC. That's not a bad guess. That's about two and a half thousand years then, right? Yeah. Look at me being well an expert at cheese. Um, okay, so yeah. No, I was going to say, like, back when they were that stupid to believe that the moon was ex- made of cheese, did they even have cheese? But the answer is yes. yes. I mean, you can't say that thing up in the sky looks like it's made of cheese and then your friend goes, what's cheese? And you go, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but that was exactly my point. My point was you were saying that like it was obviously people thought it was made of cheese back when people were stupid and thought of magic and stuff. And I was like, I'm not even sure they had cheese back in those times, but clearly they well, did. Well, egg on your face yeah, or with cheese. some cheese on it. Oh, eggy, che- cheesy mm. egg. I don't know. But if the moon was, I did a little bit of maths here. This took me quite a long time, so you better enjoy it. Um, I worked out that it would take the USA four trillion years of cheese production, as they're currently producing now, to rebuild the moon back out of cheese again. Oh. So quite a while, right? Or the optimistic way, we have four trillion years worth of cheese supply just up there. That's true. Hey, currently, yeah. If it was made of cheese. If it was made of cheese, of course, which I think they've ch- they checked that, right? That was one of the first things Neil Armstrong checked when he put his foot down. Just ate a bit. He's like, no, that is definitely not cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Popped it in. Spat it out. <laughs> that was actually um, the first words on the moon. He, w- he was like, that is not cheese. <laughs> one, <laughs> one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, but don't eat it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just trimmed the other bits off. Yeah, yeah. And Kubrick edited that bit out. Yeah, oh yeah, of course. I guess some people think of the moon as being romantic in some sense. Do you, do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I think there's some romance found in, in the... I mean, it's more romantic than looking at, like, the sun. That's just painful. Oh, mm, yeah, you know? don't do that. But there's certainly a lot of, like, uh, you know, I love you to the moon and back. There's a lot of sentiment to the moon being... Actually more out. romantic to love someone to the sun and back, though, isn't it? Because it's a lot further. This is true. But it doesn't sound as catchy, does it? I love you to the sun and back. And also, I, I like so that somebody just put, like, I love you to the moon. And then, like, the, the person that was trying to, like, steal their girlfriend away from them or whatever was like, well, I love you from the moon and back again. Have that. One up in them. Mm. The moon and back is 768,000 kilometres, right? That's quite, a, that's, that's quite a lot way to love somebody. But the sun is 200 times further away than that. So even just like, I love you a little bit away from here, my current location to where the sun is, is technically more nice than... Again, not poetic though, is it? No. It's all about the poetry. <laughs> and I, I guess... Whatever you just tried to say. I love you from wherever I am now to a little bit closer to the... You shouldn't write poems, should you? (laughs) But hey, hey, I love people a lot more than than you. Statistically, you are closer to loving someone. Yes, well done, Chris. Exactly. But without the moon, we can't say lovey-dovey stuff like that anymore anyway. So we can say, I love you to the sun and back. Or, I loved you as much as I wish I'd visited the moon when it was still there. I love you to Uranus and back. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> wow, you are a Casanova. Yeah, can I use that line? <laughs> you can anytime you want. Anyone's allowed to use that one for a charge. You could say, um, you could also say I did some more maths here. I got very oh, mathsy God. this one. This is the equivalent, I love you to the moon and back, right? I love you the same length as 18,221 marathons. Again, need to work on your poetry, I'd say. I think that's a lot cooler because that implies that I've had to run all those marathons. Mm. Which I certainly couldn't do. I don't think I could do one. I don't think I could. I, no, I, I barely even <laughs> go down the road, honestly. I yeah. love you from right here where I'm sat in my nice comfy chair. What? what how, how far is 7,000 kilometres in terms of like driving? So it's like, I love you from New York to Cleveland. <laughs> no, 7,700,000 7, kilometres. Oh, 
Oh, 768,000. So it's a lot. It's 20 times around the planet. Oh, okay. I was a bit Joe. off with New York to Cleveland. That's about that one, <laughs> 770. <laughs> well, I mean, if you get lost on the way, maybe not. Um, depends which way you go, I you're, guess. You're a bit late, mate. Yeah, I drove about 30 times around <laughs> the world. <laughs> Werewolves. Right. They no longer exist in theory. Even if they do even, still exist, yeah. they'll never be able to come out again because the moon's not there. That's true, yeah. You're right. I actually did a bit of research on werewolves myself, so I'm not surprised that oh, they're healed. You, great acting there, Chris. <laughs> no, yeah, I just wanted to make you feel good about your copy and pasted research. Yeah, seems like you've done a bit more research than me, so go on, go on. <laughs> so um, it wasn't easy to turn into a werewolf anyway here. Like we're saying it's like a cure, like, oh, what a miracle, no more werewolves. But quite honestly, the, the specifications to turn into a werewolf are so restrictive I don't think anyone would be turning into one regardless of whether there's a moon or not, right? Okay. Because first off, it's not just any moon. It's a full moon, Mm -hmm. which only happens once every month. So you can go out your normal business like 27 days of a month and only that one evening should you make sure you just stay inside, shut the curtains, you know, is that... Is that hard, that hard to ask for? And even then, it might be cloudy, in which case, or, the, or, or you're lying under an aeroplane, in which case, <laughs> out you go. <laughs> Hold on. It's, it's the idea that you have to see the moon. It's that the moonlight has to directly hit your face. It's Right, I've got, I got a quote. Let me read a quote here. Right. In Italy, France, and Germany, so I'm not sure if you have to be in those countries or they're just the ones saying it, it's said that you can turn into a werewolf if on a Wednesday or Friday... Slept outside on a summer night with the full moon shining directly on your face. What you are you are not wrong. That is incredibly specific. I need How to go to specific? Italy. It needs to be a full moon on either a Wednesday or a Friday in the summer, and I need to be outside at night. Sleeping. I have never done any of those, so I could be a werewolf, is what we basically just learned. I've never done yeah, any of those yeah. things. So I checked, right? I checked, because I was a little curious whether I was or wasn't a werewolf. On all 365 days of last year, 2019, we had 92 summer nights, right? Okay. Three of those had a full moon. Mm-hmm. None of them were a Wednesday or a Friday. So no one could have turned into a werewolf last year? Nobody could have turned into a werewolf last year anyway. It was the werewolf-free year. And none of, none of them have slept outside either. So Did you find out the last time we could have had a werewolf? No, that would have been good, wouldn't it? That would have been some good research. Because then oh. we could have checked, cross-checked it with like newspaper articles from the next day mm. and seen if there was any weird, unexplained, furry, claw mark kind of re- related murders mm. or anything. Okay. That would have been great. So, oh, missed opportunity there, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> But it probably does mean that, you know, we could be werewolves. And most people could be. It could be a lot more rife than we all previously thought. So, yeah, we're not really affecting things too much by taking the moon away anyway, because, well, no one was turning into werewolves as it was. It's good. I still might keep the uh, the shackles on my bed just... For personal use. Oh, in right. case. Just for other reasons. You know, they're a bit of <laughs> fun, aren't they? <laughs> it also means that we're going to be left with the phrase mooning... As the top search term for moon now. Would, would where the hell has the moon gone not be one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure the news would have probably covered that, like, you know, the next day. They would have yeah. filled everybody in. Um, so I don't think it would be searched a lot. But, you know, showing your bum to people, mooning, that's, that's still going to be very prevalent in the world, right? Why is it called mooning? I don't know. I think it's because it looks a bit like a moon. But it Does it? Doesn't. Mine doesn't. Have I got... Have I... <laughs> I should see a doctor immediately. Oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry, Doc. My butt does not look like the moon. Is that a problem? <laughs> because people talk about it looking like the moon a lot, and I don't feel like mine does. Mine's got have a big ever... split down the middle. I don't, I don't think the moon does. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good question. There's a, a million other things that look more like a bottom than the moon does. Have you, have you ever done it? Not intentionally. Not in t- okay, I'm not sure if it came. I think the phrase is to purposely pull down one's pants and show somebody's bottom. Uh, I mean, no. show your own bottom, not I, somebody else's bottom. No, I don't think I had you. I've done it. I've done it once for a photograph. Oh um, goodness! Oh, but the, the the person taking the photograph was in on it. You know, they, oh. they, I think they were the one that shouted, "Show us your bum!" <laughs> oh, no, what? <laughs> I don't want to. I'm kind of curious, but I also don't really think I want to know why you were having a photo shoot. <laughs> 
with someone taking pictures of us. It wasn't a photo shoot. It was a family thing on a oh, beach. Oh, this is even we weirder. Like... Your family are getting involved. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh, I feel like I'm sharing You know, much, You know yeah. the family gathers where everyone gets their arse out. You know how it is. <laughs> oh, no. You, you guys don't oh, do that? No. You know, you all gather your granddad, your, your mum. <laughs> We'll just get your ass out together. I said, great time. We'll take pictures. Yeah, the family mooning, you know. Your your family Christmas card must be horrifying. <laughs> I'll send you one next year. Please right? don't. But I, I I think for me it's not like a spur of the moment thing, right? Like it has to almost be planned. You can't just can't. It's kind of like winking, right? I don't just like I can't naturally wink. I I have to kind of pre think like, all right, I'm gonna wink now. Wink. Otherwise, I pull a really weird face. And mm. it's the same with mooning. You, I, I, by the time the the chance to moon has has come, it's already gone again. Like, oh, it's too late to moon now. It'd be that'd just be silly. It'd be inappropriate, you know. I honestly don't think the thought has ever even crossed my mind. No, you're not. You know, it rarely does mine. I've never been like, ah, oh, that would have been a great opportunity to moon someone. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So. Is the joke on them? Is it? Uh, you had to look at my ass. Is that the joke? I think that's generally it. Ha ha ha! My bum. Is you just were forced to see. You just said you didn't want a Christmas card with it, so True. if I sent that to you, I'd be laughing at you. Right. But it is also kind of ironic as well that it's called mooning, so even more reason why it shouldn't be called it, because the moon doesn't ever moon us. We never see the backside of the moon. <gasps> it, the dark it, it side spins. of the moon, some could say. Exactly. Yeah, it never... It, it, well, it's technically sometimes light, because it depends where the sun is. That's why when we get a new moon... They, the other side of the moon is bright, right? Is that how that works? No. No? Okay. <laughs> oh, maybe. I don't know. I'm... Are we creating the shadow that makes the crescent? We must be. No, because I thought the whole point is there is a side of the moon that is always... That... We should have looked into this. We should have looked into this, shouldn't we? But regardless, I there is actually a picture. You can Google what the rear side of the moon looks like, and I can see why the moon doesn't want to show it to us, because it's way uglier than the front side. Oh, really? The front side's kind of got really like texture to it, and it's got some, it's kind of got some meat to it, kind of thing. And I'm still not talking about a butt here, but um, the backside is, is just horrible looking. It looks like it's ill or something. Google it, everyone, right now. Google the backside of the moon or front and backside well, of the moon. Don't Google the dark side of the moon. I feel like you're just going to end up listening to a lot of Pink Floyd. Well, so... it wouldn't be the end of the world, but you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> but that's not what you want. Okay, I'll, I'll check it out and I'll let you know. Good, good. Some homework for you there. Yes. Periods. Yep, I had that as well. Didn't know really what to say about it. I felt feel quite underinformed on the subject. Um, also, isn't it? It's entirely a myth anyway, isn't it? Is it? Apparently. Oh, good. Can we end this point here? Yep. Perfect. Eclipses. Right. Yeah. So solar eclipses and lunar eclipses. I think so. Yeah, because they both involve the moon. One's the sun going beyond the moon, and one's the moon going beyond the sun. No, no, <laughs> no, no. The no, moon no. does not ever go behind the sun. It's quite <laughs> far away. Oh, no, yeah, I've got that wrong. What is it? Yeah, one is the moon going in front of the sun. Yeah. That is a solar eclipse. Yeah. And a lunar eclipse is we going in front of, between the moon and the sun. So we basically, like, block out the light that is being reflected off of the moon because we're in the way. Does that make any difference? Apparently so. Have I ever seen a lunar eclipse? What's it look like? It looks quite dark. Have you ever have you ever looked up and not seen the moon? Every twenty eight days, mate. Well, maybe you've seen a lunar eclipse then. <laughs> I'm confused. What is the difference between a new moon and a lunar eclipse? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good point, isn't it? Uh... Again, really would have been great to do research for these. <laughs> it kind would of have. It's almost like it? we knew we were going to have to do research about the moon. It's almost as if we're going to yeah, spend half an hour talking about the dynamics of how the moon works. So we should have probably looked into it, but. <laughs> We yeah. didn't. You don't come here for facts, kids, so <laughs> sorry about they, that. I think they knew that. I think all the people that didn't listen after episode one yeah, knew like, oh, that. Right, so they just <laughs> make stuff up and ramble about stuff for half an hour with very little information. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. It's great to be back. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. I think that'll do us for today. Hope you enjoyed listening. Yep, let us know your thoughts about a world without the moon. Is there any weird extra side effects that we didn't talk about today? Yep, if there are, you can tweet us at Chris and Jack. That's Chris with a K. But thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.